Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we, as we go into your word, we pray that you open up the word into our heart. Amen. Everyone will come to a deeper place in Christ. Amen. Full of faith and encouragement. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. Glory to God. All right. So, let's get into the word of God this morning. Let's get to what I'm going to do. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14. And this month we're talking about success and how to move forward in life. Matthew chapter 8 in verse 14. The Bible says, And Jesus was come into Peter's house. He saw his wife's mother laid, laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto her. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his words, and he healed all them that were sick. The Bible says that it may be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So all of these great things that happened in the ministry of Jesus, all of those wonderful things that happened. Verse 18. Now Jesus Christ saw the great multitude about him, and he gave commandment to depart to the other side. Jesus Christ said to them, let us go to the other side. Jesus Christ gave a command, you know, for them to move to the other side. What is the other side? The other side, so the other side is a metaphor. Jesus Christ said, let's go to the other side. The other side refers to the level you have never been before. The other side refers to the place you have never been before. So thank God that this year, let, let me just break it down in very clear terms. Thank God that this year, this year in business, you did so well. You did so well. Your business grew from grew to 10 million per annum. That was last year. The other side is taking that business from 10 million to 20 million. That is going to what? To the other side. What is the other side? The other side is that you have been renting for quite a long time. The other side is that let's move from being a tenant to a landlord. Glory to God. The other side brings that you've been a Christian and all you've been, been able to do is to pray for 20 minutes. 20 minutes at a time. Let's go to the other side moving from 20 minutes to one hour hour at the same time that's what the other side is that is what it means to move to the other side moving it says let us move to the other side so the other side is just where i need to be it's the next level so the thing is this the human nature loves to celebrate comfort zone we love to be like oh this is so wonderful but it's time for us to move to the other side look at him and say it's time for us to move to the other side it's time for us to move to the other side. I don't know where you are in your life, but something I know is that the best of God is not in the past. The best of God is in the future. The best of God is not in in the past the best of god is in the future there's always a next level in god there's always a next level in god the best of god is never in the past the best of god is in the future i'll give you some examples and this will really help you and help, help somebody here let's say that i just want to challenge you today and the reason i'm saying so is that we are in a we are in a state that because of all the challenges that people have people are forgetting their dreams people are forgetting their visions people are talking about why it can't work but for the child of god that is not a testimony jesus christ had gone through this successful phase of ministry he had cast out demons people have accepted him multi stayed around him it was time for him to settle but instead of him to settle jesus christ said hey we don't settle here what we do is that what we move to what the other side so i know that there's a temptation for you to settle i know that you had that relationship that gave you a heartbreak and you want to settle but god is saying don't settle because of a heartbreak let's move to the other side i knew that last year you grew to business up to 100 million it took blood and flesh out of you but it's time to move to what the other side i understand that something is wrong with i understand what the doctor said and your temptation is to accept the report of the doctor and say well i have to live with the high blood pressure i have to live with the diabetes but god is challenging you and he's saying let us move to what the other side look at him and said it's time to move to the other side 
Glory to God. It's time to move to the other side. It's time to move to the other side. Jesus was having a great day ministry and instead of them to settle, he told the apostles that we're not going to settle here. We are going to move to the other side. The question is this, what does the other side mean to you? In terms of your prayer life, it's time to go to the other side. In terms of your ministry work, because if you're not careful, you'll just settle down and say, oh, now I'm married and that's it. I said, oh, now I've done this and that's it. But there is something bigger that God wants you to go for. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Let's read from the NLT version. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Philippians chapter 3 in verse 13 in verse 12 chat rather 12 to 15 Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 15 praise God can you just give me a lot more volume on this uh, yeah thank you Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 okay I love this version look look at what the NIV the guy in the in the in the, in the sound room, you, you no 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 leave the NIV. I love the NIV. The NIV is very good. Yeah, let's shoot together. I want to go. Not that uh, obtained all this or arrived at what at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ took hold of me. Verse thirteen, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize. I don't know if you noticed something with Apostle Paul. One word you see there. Let's go back to verse. Let's go back to verse 12. Let's go back to verse 12. Very powerful. It says, Not that I've already obtained all this or I've arrived at the goal. He began to talk about the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal, the goal. If you're going to move forward in life, you need to make up your mind. Listen to me. There are two ways to live life. You are either going to live by default or you are going to live by what design. Default is how everybody lives life. It's, that's how everybody goes. But you can choose to live by design. Glory to God. You are going to live life either by default or by design. What is by default? I'll give an example. Um, if you buy if, if you buy either a Samsung or a Nokia phone, there's a particular ringtone it comes with. Yes or no? Make that ringtone for me. That's design. Sorry, that's default. But what do you do? You change it to your own. That's design. I'm saying that there's a default setting to life that everybody goes through but it's your choice to be like no way i'm not going to fall into the default i'm going to live by what by design and how do you live by divine by goals by goals by goals god created man with capacity to set goals and achieve them god created man with capacity to set goals and achieve them what is a goal What's the difference between a goal and a dream? A dream is a wish. What is the difference between a goal and a dream? A goal is a dream with a deadline on it. So it's not being a wish. It's something I want to accomplish and there's a date for it. Why are goals important? Because today we're going to talk about how to move forward in life. The way you're going to move your life forward is by setting powerful goals that challenges you to go forward. The natural nature of human is to shrink back and settle. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. As soon as you introduce goals, everything changes in your life. Let me give you a story. This is a very inspiring story. When I was young, I used to play table tennis. And... um, I got to the table tennis, you know, the table and we're playing. And I met someone, you know, that I thought that I, I, I like to play with him. We're playing, 
but it was not a game. You know, there's there's what they call before the game, you call it tossing. Uh-huh. You call it tossing. You just be playing up and down, playing up and down. Uh, so the way it was tossing out, like ah, this guy can take him out. You know, you you've ever check who your opponent is if you can take him out or not. So the way he was playing, I got ah, this guy, I can I can take him out. So I just say, ah, I say, oh boy, let's start a game. He gets okay, let's start a game. As soon as I say let's start a game, the guy just changed. Ah, he just gave me one robo, Roy. Ah, next thing we call it Ido Bass. You just want Roy ah, Bass, Roy Bass. Next thing, zero five. Ah, I said, but this was the guy that was doing as if he couldn't play before. There was no robo before. What happened? As soon as you say game, everybody brings out their best. Your best will not come out until their goals. And that's the truth. As soon as people think that you are playing and you are fussing around, your best will not come out. One of the powerful things God uses goals to do is to bring out our best. Glory to God. One of the things, one of the things goes to us is to bring back our best. Glory to God. Why are goals important? Why are goals important? Why are goals important? Why are goals important? Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Just play a part. There's this thing you add into it. Don't, don't do that. Just play the part. Just simply. That's fine. Thank you. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Yeah. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Glory to God. Can we read together? So the first thing, it says, Arise and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. The first thing, goals challenges me not to settle. If you see people that have settled, people that have no goals, what goals does to me? Goals challenges me not to settle. I just told about the table tennis game. You know, where's the football? Where's the football? You know, do you play some football? Do you play some? Who, who else plays football here? Anybody on this side that plays football? Please come. Put the ball and play. Some of you, you can you can do it. watch this so play. Did you notice know it's a boring game because there's no goal post? As soon as you put goal post there, the game will change. Once you don't have goal posts in your life, your life will be boring. That's the truth. You'll just be playing for fun. They'll, they'll just be playing. You're like, because without goal sport, you can't score. So the question today is this. This is a very powerful question. He says, arise, depart. He said, this is no area. One of the things God does is that God challenges you not to settle. I know that we are going through very high levels of inflation. But what God does is that even though the inflation is high, even God government policy don't favor us hey we are not going to settle god challenges you not to settle glory to god i say glory to god settling is the norm for human beings human beings love comfort zone everybody loves comfort zone everybody loves to be where they are everybody loves to belong to where they are but settling is a normal for human beings but what goes on God push you out of your comfort zone can I tell you something every time you have achieved your goal as you almost achieved your goal that's another goal <laughs> let me share a story with you and you understand through this story you understand how people achieve great things Reverend Sam was sharing a story at that time, they start where they start church is right now. They just bought it, and it was a five thousand seat at somewhere like that. I'm not sure what the number is, so don't take my words for it. They were coming from a place that would sit like a thousand people. Now they're moving to a five thousand seater. That's times five. 
He said, so he called Bishop David Oedipo to come and bless the site. You know, they were going to move there. He said, when Bishop got there, Bishop said, this is very nice, powerful. He was so impressed. He said, he thought Bishop was very impressed. And Bishop was impressed. And Bishop blessed it. And Bishop now said, when he finished, so when are you moving from here? He says, sir, it was moving first. But that's how visionaries think. By the time they are achieving one goal, their eyes on the next goal. Someone very close to Bishop was telling me, Winners Chapel, they are building this 100,000 seat auditorium. It's not yet completed. I heard that it cost them several tens, if not to a hundred billionaire. He said, Bishop just called him into a meeting and said, when are we finishing the 100,000 sitter? He said, by, we'll finish at this time. He said, that's great. I figured so. He said, so now that we know we are going to finish, what's the next we are going to build? The guy says, sir, we have not finished building. We still need more. But that's what, see, the reason why, so you're wondering, why do I settle? There's no goal. There's no goal. That's the reason why your prayer life has settled. That's the reason why your finances are settled. Because there's nothing. See, I know you have achieved something now. But what's the next thing that God is calling you to? So God, Jesus Christ said to them, He said, let us go over to the other side. There is another side. There is another side. I understand that your, your, your market has taken over Lagos, but there is still other places. I understand you've done well as a student, but there's the other side. Let us go over to the other side. Look at him and say, let us go over to the other side. Let's go over to the other side. I understand that your career is doing well, but it's a relationship that is struggling. The same way you've sorted your career, can we go to the relationship and also have a miracle? Because the tendency is that the areas that is doing well, we want to stay in it. But it's time for us to go to the other side. Some people, last year you did so well in business, and you did so well in business, that's wonderful. But can we go to the other side? So what does God do for us? God challenges us not to settle. I had a wonderful story. I had, I had, I had this inspiring story from the Sheikh of Dubai. And he says this, you know, he was, he was giving a speech. Just very challenging speech. He said, every morning the gazelle, the gazelle is a type of antelope. The gazelle wakes up and it outruns the, it outruns the fastest lion so that it can stay alive. So the gazelle wakes up and starts running, running, so that the lion doesn't catch him and eat him up. He said that, so when the gazelle wakes up, the gazelle is trying to outrun the fastest lion to stay alive. He said every morning, when the lion wakes up, the lion wakes up hoping to outrun the slowest gazelle so that he does not starve to death. The sheikh of Dubai now said, either you are a gazelle or you are a lion. If you are in Dubai, once you wake up, start running. The question is this, why are you not running? I don't know why you're smiling yet. Why are you not running? The reason why I know that you have not found something that will make you run. You need to run. And that's the power of goals because goals challenge you not to settle. So I know and I know that I know that in your in your office you are the biggest person there, but your office is not your industry. There's a better way to go. You know, have you not heard people that say that? Ah, you know, it, it, I, I'm sure you've heard this problem before. My father's farm is the biggest. It's because you're in the village. Glory to God. The reason why is that you can take the, you can take the vision to the next level. Let's read Mal Micah chapter 2 verse 10 again. Someone say amen. amen. Oh, that amen is so weak. Someone say amen. amen. Those on this side, I didn't hear your amen. I say amen. amen. Let's read one to go. It said, arise you and depart. This is not your rest. It said, you're resting so soon. He said, it's polluted. He said, this is not your rest. 
Someone says, oh, well, well, we've done, we've done a lot. He said, someone says, at my age, I've done a lot. I say, compared to who? Because you've done a lot is always in comparison to somebody else. Who exactly is that standard? And one of the things God does for us is this. God uses goals to challenge us. God uses goals to challenge us not to settle. I always say this and I'll say it again. Some of you that are not prayerful, the reason why you have not prayed is that you have not found goals that will make you pray. When you find goals that will make you pray, you will pray. Some of you that are not prayerful, the reason why you are not prayerful is that you have not found projects that will make you pray. When you find something that will make you pray, you will pray. But the challenge is that it's easy to settle because everybody loves a comfort zone. Oh, I lead one cell. Oh, I, I lead two cells and that's it. Oh, I'm able to pray for 30 minutes and that's it. But you, there's yet another level. I know you're born again, but you're still struggling with pornography. When are we going to break out of that comfort zone? The goal can be like, you know, I'll be born again and this will be a thing of the past. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Always remember this. Stagnation is self-imposed. Progress is self-achieved. Always remember this. Stagnation is self-imposed. Progress is self-achieved. Goals will not allow you to settle. The second reason why God was... So the first reason why we set goals is this. Because goals challenges us not to settle. The second reason why we set goals is this. Goals are a statement of faith. Goals are what? A statement. Someone say, we say goals are a statement of faith. Oh, wow. Hebrews eleven six says this. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, if you are not issuing statements of faith, then you cannot please God. Goals are a statement of faith. Listen to me. Goals are a statement of faith. Goals are raw declaration of what I can do by God's help. What are goals? Goals, this is another definition of goals. Goals are raw declaration of what I can do by God's help. Why must you have goals? Listen to me. Your goals, your goals give God something to work on. Yeah. Your goal gives God something to work on. Your goals give God something to work with. People are wondering, and you tell them, I, I, I will raise the one million, the one point five million dollars for my for my IT company, and they wonder that, boy, how will you do that? You say my goals gives God something to work on. Naturally, I can't do it, but with God, I can do it because the Bible says, with God, all things are what possible. My goals give something God to work with. My goal gives room for God to work. And when you set your goal, ask yourself this question. Will this goal <laughs> require me to trust God? Or is this a goal I can do by myself? Glory to God. Joshua chapter 14 verse 12. I, I want to see the scripture. Hallelujah. Goals, your goals are statements of faith. L look at David. David said that, David said about Goliath. He says, I will go and take down Goliath's head. Statement of faith. Caleb said that we will go ahead and possess the land. Statement of faith. My question is, what is your own statement of faith about this year? Your goals are your statement of faith. Will your statement of faith be that even though the dollar has gone high this year, I make my first $1 million. I make my first $10,000. What's your statement of faith? Even though the doctor says you can't have a child, I will carry a baby to full term. Is that your statement of faith? Even though they say that maybe you will not get married. You say, you see, we, all of you are going to invite to my marriage. That's my statement of faith. Amen. You need to have goals that allows God to walk with you. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Please bring that chair for me. The chair you're sitting on. Hallelujah. Carry it up. Did you see that? Because he can carry it, he needs no help. Have goals you can't carry so that God will help you. The problem is that you keep setting. Let's do that again. Are you ready? Carry it up. Did you see that? 
because he can carry it there's no need to help him have goals that will allow God to step in and help you watch this now carry this yeah what happens then I know I have to assist why because now he's attempting to carry something he cannot carry the reason why you have not seen God's help is this. You keep carrying what you can carry. And God knows you can handle it. So he says, keep carrying it. But if you want to see the hand of God, carry what you cannot carry and let God step in for you. Thank you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said, goals are a statement of your faith. Look, look, look at, oh my God, are you ready for this verse? Look at Joshua chapter 14 verse 12. Look at what Joshua said. Joshua said this. He said, now therefore, he said what? My God, my God. He said, now therefore, he said, give me this mountain. He said, why it is difficult, send me there. He said, dollar is rising, give me the mountain. They said, all and gas is that, send me there. He said, real estate is difficult, send me there. He said, because I'm a mountain rider. We don't run from mountains, we run towards mountains. Others run from mountains, we run towards mountains. Give me this mountain. I'm not saying that things will be easy. I'm saying your faith can overcome it. Are you here, somebody? Yeah. I, I can't hear some people. Are you here, somebody? Yeah. He said, now give me the mountain. He said, give me the mountain. It's time to believe God for things that are incredible. It's time to believe God for things that are impossible because your God can do anything. So Joshua said, now give me this mountain. It's, for, it's those that ask for mountains that will ride on mountains. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Can, can you see this? Can you believe it? What are goals? Goals are statement of faith. You know, <laughs> you know, I was saying something earlier about him carrying the chair. When Gideon was going to fight the enemies, God told Gideon, He said, The people that are with you are too many. How do you want to fight a battle? And they say your soldiers are too many. It doesn't make sense. The more they add, the quicker the battle to win. He said, God says the soldiers are too many. Less when you win. He will say it's the arm of the flesh that helped you. So God wants to put you in a position so that you know that when this happened, it was not my uncle, it was not my auntie, it was the work of God. Oh, oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I've said this before, I will say it again. I've learned from when I was young and I've seen it happen in my life over and over. When people that I rely on and I trusted in disappointed me, they thought they disappointed me. I've come to conclusions, haven't observed it for years, that their disappointment led me to look up to God. And the reason why was this, God wanted to do it in such a way that no man can take the glory. I'm telling you, there are certain times I had a project and someone would tell me, don't worry, I will sponsor the project, I'll give you a loan, I'll give you the money, and that will happen. And I'll say thank you. And all of a sudden, when the time of the project comes, the person that said so just disappears. And when it disappears, what disappointment does is this. Listen to me. Not all disappointments are for breakdown. Some disappointments are for redirection. So when that person disappointed me, I go to heaven. And all of a sudden, God says, I was here all along. You were leaning on man. So God opens the door and he does it. He does it in such a way, I'm wondering how did he do it? That I may know that there's no confidence in the arm of flesh. So the person said this and this and this. I said, wow. All of a sudden, from nowhere, someone comes and said, if you need some this and this and this, I can do this for you. I'm like, ah, why do you think about this? He said, it just came to my mind. And the person provided the money. And that was a miracle. If it was someone that was close to me that helped me, I would have said it was the strength of my network and connection. But now that someone that is not close to me helped, I knew it was God that touched their heart to help me. What am I saying to you? Not all disappointments are fatal. Some of them are the direction 
to turn you away from man so that you can look up to God for a bigger breakthrough. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Look at neighbor and say, not all disappointments are fatal. Some are redirection. And you need to learn that. You need to learn that. That sometimes when there's disappointment, you look at it and say, Father, thank you. Because not all disappointments are fatal. They are redirections. And some of you are here. Maybe, maybe it's a final, maybe someone wanted to give you a job. I, I, I've, I've seen this happen over and over and over again. Glory to God. Look at him and say, let's move to the other side. Look at him and say, let's move to the other side. Look at him and say, let's move to the other side. What does goals do for me? Gold gives me endurance, staying power. Goals give me staying power. God give me staying power. Uh, you know, girls give me staying power. There are some times that you will almost be thrown off, but goals give me staying power. Goals give me staying power. Look at the book of Job, chapter 6, verse 11, NLT. Job, chapter 6, verse 11. Goals keep me encouraged despite short term setback. Goals keep me encouraged despite short despite short term setback. See what the Bible says. It says, but I don't have the strength to endure. I have what? Nothing to live for. So the reason why he had no strength to endure was because he had what? Nothing to live for. So I want to say to you, if you feel depressed here, ask yourself, is there a goal in my heart? Job said that, he said the reason why I don't have the strength to endure is because I have nothing to live for. Anywhere you find that you're discouraged, you're overwhelmed, you're depressed, ask yourself, what is the vision here? What is the goal here? Hallelujah. So let's, let, let's turn to the last scripture. In, uh, and I want to talk about just how to, how to work on your goals, how to set them up, how to... It's not the last scripture, it's one of the last scriptures. Luke chapter 14 verse 28. Luke chapter 14 verse 28. Glory to God. So why don't people set goals? Why don't people set goals? A lot of people do not set goals because of previous fears and disappointments. A lot of people do not set goals because of previous disappointments and fears. And this is how it works out. So they, used, they set goals before and the goals did not happen and their soul was damaged. I, I was I was I was paying attention to someone, and uh, you know, a, a lady was sharing with me how she had gone through three relationships that really broke her heart, and she closed the door of her heart. She closed it. She said, "She's in her words, I just zoomed out. I just said, this marriage is not for me. I don't care again. I'm not going to get married, and that's it." And she just zoomed out. But along the line, she was able to hear a message like this, and she said to try again. On her fourth trial, she met this guy. Eventually, one thing led to the other. They fell deeply in love and now they are married. In our words, if I did not try again, I will never have a miracle. What am I saying to you? I know that there have been previous disappointments, but you must realize something. The past is not equal to the future. Did you hear what I said? The past. The fact that it happened in the past does not mean it will happen like that in the future. The past is not equal to the future. The past is not equal to the future. Some of you are here. The reason why you've, had, you've refused to go into business again is that you lost a lot of money in the past. And so you don't want to try investment again. Remember, the past is not equal to the future. Some of you are here, you have been deeply hurt by someone you love again. And that's why you're not loving again. The past is not equal to the future. Look at him and say, the past is not equal to the future. And the reason I'm saying so is that a lot of people, the reason, a lot of people, the reason why they don't set goals is because genuinely, they are just afraid that the failure of the, of the past will show up in the future again. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is how to set the goals. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. The Bible says, Which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first? And this is how you set a goal. Before you start doing something, you sit down first. Seated not down first and counted the cost, whether he has sufficient to what? Finish it. 
verse, verse 29 and less happily when he had laid the foundation is not able to finish it and behold it begin they begin to mock him verse 30 the bible says this verse 30 saying this man began to build and was not able to finish it so the first thing is that so how do i set goals i've, I've learned what goals are goals are powerful the first way i set goals is this i begin by praying in the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 someone say hallelujah hallelujah first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 are you there all right how do i set my goals let's shoot together i want to go i uh, know now nah. we're just three people reading want to go everyone please eyes has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which the lord have people watch this the difference between goal setting in the kingdom and outside the kingdom is this outside the kingdom they just say dream whatever you want to dream it will happen that's not the kingdom in the kingdom our goals is based on what god shows us it says that the things that god has prepared for them that love him so my goals is based on the things that god has prepared already so i'm not just saying lord do this and i'll give an example I'll give an example. Let me use an example of marriage. So, a young lady says that in 2024, October, I'll be married. Question. In God's agenda for your life, is that your marriage date? I know you can pray and say, that's my wish. Everybody can pray, that's your wish. That's fine. The reason why is that you will just be putting yourself under pressure. You cannot breath in the flesh what is meant to happen in the spirit. What you will birth, and this is the concept of Ishmael. Ishmael is trying to achieve through the senses and the flesh what God designed to happen through the weapons of the spirit. So instead of you to give birth to the child of promise, you eventually give birth to Ishmael because Ishmael is a child of the flesh. Ishmael is a fleshly attempt to produce a spiritual result. That's what Ishmael is. And the reason I'm saying so to you is this. So you, you're praying for this, you're praying for this, you're praying for this. Would you just slow down a little and say, Lord, before I set goals, show me what you want for my life. So someone said that, I'm praying for my visa. They rejected me three times. Did he say you should travel? Is it not the best that he says you should travel, we'll give you a visa? So the first thing, the first thing, the first thing is to line up and say, Lord, what is your will in this area? Lord, what is your will? What in this area? And how do you do that? Very simple. Spend some time to pray. Wednesday is coming. Spend some time to fast and pray. And as you're fasting and praying, pray, 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 pray. As you pray, this is what happens to you. This is what happens if you're sensitive. Pictures will begin to form in your spirit. Who knows what I'm talking about? Pictures will begin to form. Those pictures are the goals and the vision God has put in your heart. Take note of them. When it was time to expand this place, I would just see myself praying for the Lekki Church and I would see an expanded auditorium. I didn't even know how it would happen. I would just see myself praying, praying. I would see myself in an expanded auditorium. I would just see myself praying, praying, praying. I would just be praying, 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 praying. And sometimes, and let me say something to you. Everybody, please pay attention. When you pray about something that comes to you and you don't understand it, keep praying. As you keep praying, the revelation will become fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. What happens to people is that they take half revelation and run away and they do damage to themselves. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first thing is that you pray in the spirit. The second thing is that once you, once you see in the spirit, write down what you see in the present tense. Write down what you see in what? In the present tense. What does that mean? My business annual income is 300 million. Write it down in the present tense. The third thing is this. Set a deadline. And say this year, by December 31st, the fourth thing you do is that make a list of steps. Make a list of steps. So you've said that my income is going to be three on, um, our revenue will be 300 million or we're going to get an investor's fund of 100 million naira. What are the steps? I'm going to talk to this. I'm going to talk to that. I'm going to advertise this. The reason why is that goals must be pursued because you wrote them down. Does not mean it will happen? The next thing is this. When you write down the steps, begin to take actions. Begin to what? take action because goals will not happen by itself begin to take actions begin to take actions 
and when you take action the last thing is this do something daily about your goals do what do something daily about your goals let me ask you this question and it's very powerful will your goal honor god that's very important so as you set those goals ask yourself one question does my goal honor god when you make all this money does my goal what does my goal honor god what is the goal that reflects spirituality what's the goal that reflects spirituality will my goal honor god let's read the scripture we started with again and we'll close hallelujah i say hallelujah matthew chapter 8 verse 18 matthew chapter 8 verse 18 someone say hallelujah Mm. the bible says and jesus no okay yeah that's it bible says and jesus saw the great multitude and he gave commandment to what the path to the other side ladies and gentlemen what is the other side spiritually what's the other side financially what's the other side ladies and gentlemen have you settled to your comfort zone some people are here you are dealing with an addiction the other side is deliverance it's deliverance that you on this side you are in is that you are addicted to nicotine you are addicted to cocaine you are addicted to pornography to masturbation to all of the sexual scenes the other side is deliverance on this side on this side is the fact that every year we do 20 millionaire in business the other side is 100 millionaire on this side is the fact that my store is in my is in my, my my shop is in my car the other side is that i should move into a mall i know that there are limitations i know there are challenges but it's time for you to move towards the other side if there will be challenges why do i want to stay on this side because it's comfortable i don't have to stretch i understand it it's familiar i know the people i know the problems but listen to me your growth your expansion is not on this side your growth and expansion is on the other side you have stayed here for so long it's time for you to move toward the other side it's time to challenge your potential it's time to stretch your faith it's time to believe for the impossible because it's time to move to the other side stand up let us pray